All right, it's racy again. Um, vernalization, that's the key word for the day. I have a video out there talking about vernalization, really going through the details of it. Uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to, uh, to look at my vernalization trial, kind of a behind the scenes. So I'm here in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, we plant this trial somewhere around uh, mid-May, first, first two weeks of May, basically, is when we're shooting for it every year. And uh, I put these trials and put every one of my lines in here. And then I come back here, you know, sometime in August, which I'm here about the uh, first week in August. Quick review. Fertilization requirement is the amount of cold tolerance that that plant has to be exposed to during its growing cycle to go from vegetative growth stage to reproductive. So it, for it to elongate, put on stem, um, put on uh, your upper leaves, and then continue to push ahead and go through normal productive uh uh, reproductive stage. Um, so I'm just going to walk through here. We're going to show you a couple examples of, of kind of what they look like uh, as far as vern, uh, vern varieties and, and ones that didn't vernalize. Here's Gainer in our lineup. We refer to this one a lot as our northern type. This is what we call true winter. When we talk about true winters, true winters refers to high vernalization requirement with high cold tolerance. Because it doesn't have uh, th because it has a long vernalization requirement, you cannot use this one in a spring. And we kind of walk through here. I would call this 50% vern. There's a lot of leaves down in here or a lot of stems down in here that are not going to produce an elongate. So you wouldn't want to see that one in a spring planting. But here's a really great example of a facultative type. This is Tricow Flex. We grow this one a lot up in the north. It's because it is facultative. We can actually plant this one in that late spring or early spring type situation. Uh, let it go through normal growth, 30, 60, 90, 120 days, just depends on your environment. And it will reproduce um, and go through its full uh, growth stage. And at this point, you could harvest this one at any given time, whether you're a late boot stage or maybe you're a soft dough person. Um, but this, whatever your goals are for that situation of a, a facultative type and a spring planted. So this is what exactly what we're talking about. Here's another great example. This is a facultative, seems to have pretty decent cold tolerance. That's Tricow Thor. Again, this trial was planted in May here in Montana. Walk through here, looking at all the, the biomass that it has. There's a lot of potential here for some really good hay for this particular line. Facultated may be something that uh, you want to put in your lineup. You, might, you may want a true winter for the fall and turn around and plant another spring forage crop uh, with a small grains. This gives you the opportunity to do that uh, twice throughout the year. Just to show you how much growth we can get uh, from May to August with these facultative types, um, I've got a pretty good measuring stick here called my shoulder. Um, we're, we're right about uh, flowering stage, 50% flowering on this one, uh, maybe three quarter, but uh, we've got at that stage, we've got a five foot of growth easily uh, in this location. So what we'll see here too, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good biomass down in here, some pretty large leaf. This, this could be some pretty good cow chow for anybody who want to roll it up, put it in a bale. Um, something to know though is you, your yields are going to take a hit in the springtime. That's just the nature of the beast of, of growing small grains in the springtime versus small grains uh, in that fall. You know, when you have a 200 day uh, crop, you can actually uh, develop a, a crop slowly in the winter crops. Uh, they develop better root systems. They take up nutrients for those long periods. There's so many factors that go into getting those really high yields. So a spring planting, I would expect, depend, again, depending on your nutrients and your neighborhood and your, and your environment, um, you're going to be half or even, I would expect, closer to one third of the yield that you should see uh, in a fall planted type situation. <clears throat> so for example, to getting 15 to 17 tons on a fall planted triticale, you're probably gonna get five to seven tons on a spring planted triticale. Again, that's just the reality of growing small grains in a spring type situation. Um, but again, it could be highly valuable to you if you don't have enough, uh, enough feed stacked up or, or in the bin. Uh, just a really great opportunity uh, to add some more tonnage to your overall needs for the year.